Dark Knight Entertainment's second game, Life is Strange, is a good example of looking at the errors of your first attempt and crafting an experience that will keep you guessing until the final credits. Life is Strange is an episodic adventure game that takes cues from the highly popular Telltale games. In this game you play as Max Caulfield, a student at Blackwell Academy, who while seeing a girl being shot discovers she has the ability to change time. However, once she is reunited with an old friend, Chloe Price, who turns out to be the girl who she saves, they start looking into the mystery of a missing Blackwell student, Rachel Amber, before a tornado destroys the home of Arcadia Bay. The setting of Blackwell Academy will act as a main hub for the game, and throughout the five episodes, all the episodes will feature at least some moments within the halls, and features classic stereotypes like sports jocks, the popular mean girls, sign geeks and hipsters. The school seems to be a living and breathing location and each of these groups help establish their character and their prime motivations throughout the story. In addition, there are different locations that include the diner that Chloe's mom works at, Chloe's house and an abandoned scrapyard, and each of these plays into the wider narrative of the game. One of the aspects of the story which I have to give the writers credit for is the ability not to shy away from what could be seen as very taboo subjects. For example, in episode 2 you have to help and convince a classmate not to commit suicide after being bullied for appearing on a video kissing many of the students at the school, which implies that she'd been roofied at a party. Also regarding how Max discovers her powers by intervening with a shooting in the school, it's good to see that the writers are prepared to tackle some of these subjects within their work. Gameplay wise, if you played anything like the Telltale's Walking Dead, then you'll instantly feel at home. Also during the game there'll be moments to go off the story path and find different students and other characters that you'll be able to interact with. However, what sets this game apart is the ability to play with time itself. This is perhaps one of the better and fun parts of the gameplay. By playing around with time it gives you a chance to get conversations correct, rewind and even get better answers than before and working out puzzles. However, the heart of the game is the story between Max and Chloe. While the voice acting in the game is exceptional, these two friends who are reunited in a random encounter and throughout the game their drive to reconnect and to find out what happened with Rachel Amber brings them closer. However, I felt that the work of the voice actresses of Hannah Tell and Ashley Birch really solved the range of emotions running between these two. Another strong aspect of the game is the use of licensed music. The music ties into the indie scene, but it is used like you'd expect from a TV show or a movie. Songs are used in a way to make a scene more impactful and it is not a surprise that it has won awards for the music featured. My main concern of the game is that with the use of hipster culture and licensed tracks it is going to date the game within a decade or so. Also, while it's easy to compare it to the Walking Dead games, if you had an issue with the controls of those games then sadly it seems that it will also be a problem with Life is Strange. In part of episode 5 there's a funny moment where Max is talking to Warren and you can hear Hannah's performance but Max's mouth doesn't move at all. While it's an issue that can take you out of the scene, it's just a funny mistake that made it into the final game. In regards to the game, it feels that most of the other aspects of the game are really hidden away and would require a few replays to get some of the more unknown photos. However, the main problem I have with the game is that while the story is generally well thought out and paced for four parts, I felt that the finale was predictable and fell apart. For me, it felt rushed and the constant jumping back to the events at the start of the game at one point really got tiresome, but if a player is really paying attention, the game actually gives you a massive clue and hint to the twist at the end of episode 4. Life is Strange is an interesting game that will divide people. For some, the solid story and characters will draw people into its world, and for people who enjoyed games from the Telltale Library will find the controls and format very familiar, even though some of the issues of clunky controls will bother people who didn't enjoy that style of control scheme. While the characters of Max and Chloe are well thought out and feel like real people with emotions everyone will relate to, all the characters fall into the standardised stereotypes. And while the game uses its love for pop culture to help the settings and characters, I have a concern that this is going to age the game. While the narrative shines light into some real world issues, I have to give the writers credit for weaving in topical and taboo themes within this game and they do a good job in being as sensitive as possible, more to do with the idea of gun violence and suicide. But yet, I feel that the story's conclusion was slightly predictable and was rushed, 
and it's part of a game I wouldn't enjoy replaying. Also there is dialogue in episode 1 which could spoil the ending of episode 4, which if you don't know is coming is a pleasant shock. Also if you want to check out the game for yourself, the first episode is available to download for free.